and welcome to the channel. Um, we'll continue with our app and originally this was meant to be, this was part of a much longer video that I split into, like I said at the end of the last video. So we'll continue with uh, the authentication block um, as originally planned and that's what we're going to do today. As always, like and subscribe and enjoy the video. So uh, we're going to start off with the states and um, the states are going to be what um, are the basis of uh, how are you, our UI is redrawn. And um, of course we're using equitable. Let me come to the state. We're using equitable because equitable, you know that does not, only has referential equality uh, for objects and um, it only returns true if you're comparing objects if they are the same instance. That's why we're using equitable and uh, it's the plugin here. It's highly recommended when you're dealing with um, Flutter block. In fact, they come as a pack. They probably, I think they're made by the same guy. Uh, they're maintained, let me not say made. They're maintained by the same person and they work very well. They save us a lot of hassle of writing a lot of boilerplate code as I showed in the pub dev. So we are going to have, I believe, um, three states. We're going to have an initialized, authenticated, and um, actually we're going to have four. Yeah, I just checked. We're going to have four. So um, yeah, basically that's what it's going to be. And um, the first state, uh, an abstract class is essentially a class that does not need to be instantiated, right? Like this. So we do not need to instantiate this class to use it. And um, since we are using equitable to allow us to compare different instances of authentication state in this instance, we need to pass the properties to um, the superclass. Without this line, this line here, list object, blah, 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 um, we will not be able to properly compare the different instances of um, authenticated, right? So, uh, first things first is um, the problem when you use the boilerplate code, it gives you something like this class initial authentication state, which extends the authentication state, right? Um, I think we can rename that. We can start with... Uh, I wish it didn't do that. I wish it just gave you this first line. Uh, we could say here an initialized, an initialized. I'm spelling it with an a, with an S instead of a Z because, um, well, I'm Kenyan, and um, our type of British is from uh, uh, depending on how you look at. Uh, the other side of the Atlantic, not the one that uses the Z. So uninitialized, um, but you could use the Z if you want. Or should I use the Z to make you feel, maybe because I feel like nowadays um, American English is used more, it's more pronounced, particularly uh, online. Like um, if you look here, color nowadays doesn't have a U like it does in British English. But um, so yeah, okay, fine. Let me just use the Z. Uninitialized. That's better. So uh, first, when we do that, we're going to have to come here to off block and we could say uh, initial authentication state. I think we can just put uninitialized, yeah. Yeah, it, this boilerplate, it's too much boilerplate. It's uninitialized, like so. Yeah, I wish they would give you just a little bit less boilerplate. Here, they're too helpful for their own good. So change that in the authentication state and the authentication block if you're following along. Um, yeah, so we started the uninitialized. Um, yeah, like so. And after that, uh, we go to the next one is going to be authenticated. The thing we could do that could save us a bit of aggro is um, in the state, we could move this up here like so. We could cut this, put it in here like so, and then we can hit save like that. Yeah, and we can also, um, that's the first, uninitialized. 
So uninitialized uh, with a Z is uh, or Z. Here we see whether the auth state is initialized. So that's the first state. Um, after that, we're going to have authenticated. So we could say class authenticated, authenticated, like so. This extends the authentication state, like so. And um, we're going to have the, uh, we're going to have the user, ID here. We're going to have a user ID field here, and uh, of course we need to create. Uh, we need to generate a constructor. Hit OK, like so. We're going to have that, and um, we could copy this. And basically, we are going to compare the user IDs. Uh, based on for authenticated we're going to use the user IDs to compare whether uh, uh, the states have been authenticated um, as always um, this is from equitable to save us having to go through all the boilerplate code and um, we could also, if we want, we could override the string method so that we can print it on, um, so that we can log it. If we wanted to log it, for example, we could say something like um, at override, at override, and this one comes from at override, and um, wait. We could have string. If you want to log it in the block delegate, this will happen in the block delegate. I think in the next video, I uh, would like us to have to see a lot of what we are doing so that we can, um, because it's very nice. Um, I mean, Flutter, the, the whole point of Flutter is uh, the UI is a function of state, right? Um, so we should have. Um, we should actually see stuff. So we will just go and build a couple of widgets, hook up the block delegates to the main, and um, we get seeing things, right? Because right now we're just building stuff in and, and we're not seeing it. And of course, the problem is really that block has a lot of um, boilerplate. But yeah, we we will manage so we'll get there so don't get uh, don't lose any hope so if we want to log this in the block delegate which we will make in a few in a few videos we could um use uh, i believe string interpolation let me we could say um we could say um authenticated and here say uh, user ID like so um, I don't think that's necessary so we could do that um, when we could do that uh, this this will, will help us to log it uh, better when we create the block delegate, which we will uh, connect. Uh, we will tell the blog. We will tell block about it in the main .dat file. So that will come in a bit later. But um, I will point this out uh, right now that we can use it uh, to to log that. The next state is um, authenticated but not set. Um, this is where you have just logged in, your email has been accepted, your email and password have been accepted, and we'll have very basic checking of that. But your email and password have been accepted, but you still need uh, to give us details about um, your interests and your age and your location. So this is what this is going to take care of. So we could call it authenticate, authenticated. but not set like this and this extends authentication state like so and we're going to have a final field and we can say final 
string call it user id like so and of course because this is a final we hit the generator and we get a constructor hit okay okay and because we're going to compare be comparing based on this we can just copy this and if you want to log the auth but not search you could also copy it here if you want to log this you could also copy it here so that you can see it in the what's it called uh, using the during transition so that you can see it um, with the block delegate which we will get to not right now so that is that and the final one um, I think there is one more state yeah um, the state um, is when somebody is not authenticated for whatever reason you could say class and our authenticated unauthenticated uh, this extends the authentication state like so and uh, yeah that's basically it so this are uh, all our authentication state and thankfully we will not have to return to this uh, this file for the rest of the app so we can safely close it uh, of course we'll have to go back to user repository but um this is i think we're done with we're done with this so we could um yeah, let's just let's just close up a couple of things close up close that uh yeah we'll go to use it we'll go back there and we'll go to pubs with yaml we still have things we have not done but this is basically the entire user so we can close this and main dot that so we have not even started there so quite a bit left to do uh, for that now let's look at i believe the events and then the block now it's time to go to event and remember um the three main things you need to remember with block are state events and block uh, states are what uh, govern the rebuilding of uh, the ui events are actually interaction usually interaction to the ui or the app starting like somebody or somebody pressing a button like that and block is the the brains of the two uh, if you can remember the diagram so we come to the to this the authentication event and um here we'll have the um all the things that can happen in the ui basically so first things first is we could come to here to the state and we could copy this line we could just get this like so copy it and we can go back we need to copy also the override wait we need to copy the override let me not forget the override copy like this come back here to the event and we can put it here like so and after that we have three events uh, the first one is app started that's when uh, to notify the block that it needs to check if the user is authenticated uh, then we have logged in which um, notifies the block that the user has actually been successful in logging in and then logged out is um, get rid of the user data that the guy has been logged out so yeah basically that so the three classes we have here are class app started and this extends the authentication event oh, okay like so and the class logged in just a second uh, logged in this extends the authentication event same and the third and final is class logged out um, logged out this extends the authentication event so basically it's very straightforward nothing too fancy and now we can go to blog uh, to block and app started you know notifies the block that uh, i need to check if somebody has been authenticated or not and uh, when the app starts um, so that you can know whether to render the login screen or not or you can just jump straight into the search search um search page 
uh, logged in, it checks whether to notify a user, notify the block that the user signed in and logged out is, well, the opposite here, signed out. So next thing is to go to, now it's sort of the block. So let's continue with uh, building our block. And now uh, we're on the, we're actually on the block. And you know, block, as I've said, it just takes events, as you can see here, and converts them into state, and the state is what is used to rebuild the UI. So pretty much straightforward. And um, our alpha block is going to have a dependency on uh, the user repo, right? So we could move this a bit down, could come here and do this. And after that, we could say authentication block. I uh, no, no. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to first add uh, the final variable before we create the constructor. Supposed to add um, the final variable. So we could say final the field um, user repository is going to be user repository like so and um to sort that out we could come here and hit where is generate hit generate hit the constructor hit okay like so get um could change this a bit we could say here authentication block and um, we could say required to use the why do I thought it was supposed to import meta um, yeah I think it's supposed to okay you could use either I'm guessing so we could say user repository and say user re repository like so and we are going to assert that we um, this makes sure that our user repo will never um, passed in with never null so we can say here uh, shut that's the user repository is not equal to null Put the comma here and say user repository. User repository. Like so, we did that before in, um, yeah, I think we did it in the user repository. So, um, the authentication uh, block is going to uh, manage checking and updating the user's authentication state in response to events. So that's what this is what is going to basically do, right? So of course we change this to uninitialize to match the, the to match this state here. So yeah, so we have the uninitialized, and we are going to come now to the map event to state like so. And we are going to use async star since we're dealing with the stream. And we are going to we're going to use yield star and then create the methods. Um, yield star, or some people call it yield each, um, depending on where where you check. Uh, it it helps us separate the event handlers into what we're going to do is we're going to separate them into their own functions. It's um, standard practice. That's the pattern they normally use. You could write it here, but it would get the it would get the uh, map event. It would make it a bit cluttered. So what the yield star does, the yield star is. Um, I think I mentioned it in a, in the previous video. It's a generator function. It inserts all elements of the subsequence into the sequence currently being constructed. Uh, basically, it uh, it calls the what's it called? Um, yield normally returns a single value, right? 
and yield star recursively calls uh, the other function until um, the, st the stream dries up and then passes it along, right? So, yeah, basically that, um, that is it, basically. And so we can, uh, we can come here to the, can get rid of the to-do and add the logic. It's best thing, not explained. Um, to be understood, that is not just explained. Uh, it's best thing. So we could say if the event in question is app started, uh, we're going to uh, hit yield star like this uh, into map map started to state like so and of course we have to create this at the bottom and um, yeah we have to create this uh, method at the bottom so let's uh, let's continue with this method and we'll come down here and we can say stream authentication state like this and we're going to have map app started to state and because it's a stream it's going to be an async star or async inch depending and we're going to use a try catch block so we could say try and um, going to create a final variable final is signed in and this is going to await await what um, the user repository dot is signed in where is it here it is okay is signed in and we're also going to have another final variable. We can say final is first time. And this one is going to await the user repository dot is first time. And we're going to pass in the UID. Oh, no, no, no. I made a mistake. Sorry. Uh, let's just get that. We're going to get the is signed in, and depending on this, we can say if this is true, if is signed in, if is signed in, if it's true, that is, we return, uh, we get uh, final variable, and this will await the get user i believe um user repository dot get user like so and um we'll create another final variable is first time this will await the is first time dot is first time and we will pass in the UID like so and if if this is not true if not is first time I uh, will uh, this is where this is where you see us uh, using a constructor no uh, the yield or we use the yield star because we're going to have another yield here so it's going to run this yield until um, it stops, um, value stops dribbling from it and then goes back to the other. So that's why we use yield star. Yield authenticated but not, but not set. And we're going to pass that to, we're going to pass the UID. 
Is it authenticated by not sat? Um, let's just check. Uh, it's a state, right? So authenticated but not set, yeah. And it takes in uh, what could be a user ID or UID. So let's go back to block, authenticated but not set. And else, else we're going to yield, yield, not yield star, uh, authenticated authenticated and we're going to pass in our uh, UID like so if it's not um, if it's not their first time this means it, it is their first time uh, and then else mm, wait think we need to, we need to put this else here so the else um, if neither of this that means the person is on unauthenticated so it would yield let me just take care of that uh, yield Sorry, let me give it a bit of space. Unauthenticated. Like so. So in such a situation, it will yield unauthenticated. So it will come and check um, if the person is signed in. Uh, hit us up with the... Oh, that's right. We need to put a catch block. Uh, user repository. Um, if the person is signed in, we, we get the UID from this method. And then we pass it to the is first time. If it is not first time, we set we we set it as the authenticated but not set. Uh, if it is the first time, if if it's if it's not is first time, uh, we set authenticated but not set. If it's the opposite of this, that is um, the negative of this. The person is authenticated and we pass in the UID. Else, if uh, this one connects to, yeah, if is not signed in, this connects to the if is not signed in, the person um, we yield uh, unauthenticated. And of course, this is a try catch block, so I think this will be here, yeah, yeah. So here we will have catch, and basically we will just. Um, could have nothing here and we could just yield just a simple yield um, an authenticated like so so basically we just yield unauthenticated so yeah that's the first one and I think we have um, two more to get around to yeah we have two more to get around to and then we are finished continue so first checking with user repository and uh, that's the UI. User repositories. First time is basically a boolean on whether the the user exists in our collection. Basically, that's what it is. So in this case here, we would check whether they don't exist, and if they don't exist, we go to authenticated but not set, and then go, they go through the rigmarole of setting up. And if they do exist, we just send them to authenticated. So let's go to our next event. And our next event is, I believe, logged in. So we could come here and say, else if mm, we could call it else if event is logged in, event is logged in, like so. And um, Logged in. Uh, if also if event is logged in, we would yield. What would we yield? Uh, I don't think we've made the method yet. It's called map logged into state. Map logged in to state. 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 Like so. And yeah. 
put that there and um, uh, we come and create it at the bottom here so it's a stream it's going to be a stream authentication state like so map logged in to state like this async function async star it's a stream remember and um create a final because it is first time and this is going to await the user repository dot is first time and we are going to pass we're going to get the user in check so we could say await the same repository let's use a repository um when it doesn't help you out the id doesn't help you out you think you've made a mistake and you say dot get user like um this so yeah and if you get a no from is first time is first time if we get no that means um, the user doesn't exist in our uh, in our collection on Firebase. Uh, we of course yield. In fact, I think you can just copy it. Um, we could yield um, off, but not set. But then we would pass something else. So we could just copy this. Um, save save a few keystrokes. And what we would yield, we would get here is uh, we would await uh, the user repository dot get user like so, and then else we would just jump in straight to the authenticated. Else we would jump into we would yield. Yield, not yield star, because uh, we're not at the top. Authenticated, and here we would await, 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 underscore user repository dot get user, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so. Like so. so basically, that, and I think there is, I think we have logged out, we haven't logged out, right? So for that we would have we would come back here and we could add an else or an else if so we could say else if the event is logged out uh, we yield star or each map logged out to state like so and um the next thing would be actually creating that so that would be here so it would come at the bottom here and this one is going to be basic very straightforward authentication uh, state like so and map map log my spelling it's late my my spelling is getting uh, disjointed out to uh, how to state I'm not used to writing the words joined up that much async star like so and we yield unauthenticated unauthenticated like so and we yield unauthenticated and then the user repository dot sign out like so finally we have done everything we needed to do we set up our models uh we had the user model here we then came and set up the user repository which abstracts all the methods that we're going to use in firestore 
and yeah and we left one method we'll create in the future and then after that we came to the authentic uh, the block and the various files we set up and um, we set up the states the various states then the events and the block which is the the logic part of it which will map the events to the state which will cause the UI to rebuild we have more or less finished our authentication block fully now what we need to worry about is the UI which we will do in other videos I believe this video has really gotten really long so we'll, next we'll create a couple of widgets then we'll work on the login form uh, the sign up form and then hook it up to the authentication block so that we can at least start seeing something so i hope to see you in the next video as always um like and subscribe this is waga and good evening for me good morning it's for you and good afternoon depending on where you are have a good day